So, hi everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation. Um, this is SOS um, simplifying operators substantially. Um, so to start off, we're just going to do a bit of an introduction. My name is Mana. I'm an associate software engineer um, at um, at Red Hat. Um, I work on the ecosystem experience engineering team, specifically on the operators enablement team. And so before software engineering, um, I was an English teacher in South, South Korea. Um, and I graduated with my English degree um, at University of Minnesota Crookston. Um, so I decided I didn't want to be an English teacher anymore. And so I went into App Academy, which is a coding boot camp. And that's how I landed my job here at Red Hat. Next is my partner. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Soundarya, uh, working as a software engineer at Red Hat in the operator enablement team. So I'm an international student from India. Uh, I came to US to pursue my master's in computer science and graduated from University of Cincinnati and then landed up as a software developer here in Red Hat. Okay, to start off with our presentation, uh, SOS, Simplifying Operators Substantially. We're going to be talking about the five W's and one how of operators. And so to kind of touch base on how we came with this topic, um, last, this a couple months ago, we went to Cloud Native Rejects, and we did a presentation on an operator we were, we were creating called the L5 operator. Um, it took an operator and um, it fulfilled all the... Um, levels of um, capability levels of an operator. We'll talk about that later on. Um, but we went to Cloud Native Rejects, we did this presentation and we were constantly hit with the question, why operators? And so um, to really understand why operators, we have to touch base on what operators are. So that's what we're gonna be talking about uh, in this presentation. Um, it's gonna be a very beginner's course. Um, we're just going to, um, talk about everything very high level. Um, there's definitely more to operators, but this will just be a starter course for what operators are. And so the five W's and one how operators, who created operators, what are operators, why are operators valuable, where do operators thrive, when should we use operators, and how can we create our own operators. At the end of this presentation, we'll also do a little demo, and we'll provide you with some um, operator exercises that you can um, mess around with and experiment on your own on how to create operators. Um, and then we'll also give you some resources that helped us during our learning journey in creating operators. So five W's and one help operators. So who created operators? Um, Brandon Phillips, he is the one that first termed the, the word operators. Um, he's the, he was the CTO of Coral S. Um, in 2016, he wrote this article called Introducing Operators, Putting Operator Operational Knowledge into Software. And so he writes, a site reliability engineer is a person that operates an application by writing software. They're an engineer that, and a developer who in, knows how to develop software specifically for a particular application domain. Um, the resulting piece of a software has an application's operational domain knowledge programmed into it. So he goes on to say that his team has been busy working in the Kubernetes community, designing and implementing this concept to reliably create, configure, and manage complex application instances on top of Kubernetes. And he calls this new class of software operators. And so what are what is an operator? What are operators? An operator is an application-specific controller that extends the Kubernetes API to create, configure, and manage instances of a complex staple application on behalf of a Kubernetes user. So an operator builds um, upon the basic Kubernetes resource and controller concepts, um, but it includes domain or application-specific knowledge to automate common tasks. So an operator contains three um, big components, um, three major components, which is a controller, resource, and knowledge. These are the three main things that make up an operator. So first off, um, the first component of an operator is a controller. Uh, a controller is basically a control loop that watches the state of your cluster and moves your cluster 
your current cluster state closer to the desired state. So it watches your state, checks for differences, and if anything is out of place, it acts to make sure that your um, current state is um, as perfectly defined um, and similar to your desired state. So similar, um, some examples of controllers that you see in Kubernetes are the repl replica set controller, deployment controller, and daemon set controller. And so to um, iterate and to really specify, controllers aren't operators, but operators are controllers. Operators um, contain um, no, domain application and domain specific knowledge. So, so controllers don't contain that, right? So controllers aren't operators, but operators are controllers because operators do contain that um, control loop that's constantly checking to make sure that app application specific knowledge is um, as you defined it in your desired state. So um, for a visual um, representation, everybody's played this game, right? Where it's like find find 10, 10 missing items, right? So that's basically what your controller is doing, right? So it sees, it, you give it the desired state, right? The top image is your desired state and it sees your current state and, and it notices that it's not the same as your desired state. And so it makes those changes and it makes sure that your current state is as your desired state. Another graph to kind of represent um, a controller is um, this graph here. Say a user addresses or changes your custom resource. We'll talk about that uh, um, in the next few slides. They change your custom resource. And so um, your controller gets informed about that via informers. And so it does this reconcili reconciliation loop. And so it makes sure that um, your current state is as you define it in the desired state. And then it updates the status and it makes the world or your cluster look as desired as you specify. So Kubernetes controllers allow us to run and manage our application inside a cluster. Um, controllers are the control loops that watches the state of our cluster and makes our requests, makes or request changes where they're needed. And so the next component of an operator is a resource. So we have a controller and then we have a resource, specifically a custom resource. Say there are, uh, for a custom resource, um, it's an endpoint in the, um, Kubernetes API that stores a collection of API objects of a certain kind. Some familiar resources um, are a pod, secret, or config map. But in specific to operators, we are creating custom resources. You might be wondering what that is. Um, custom resources is what we is our um, is our operator, right? So our our is our resource that our operator is watching. A custom resource is an endpoint in the Kubernetes API, right? So let's say um, the easiest way to find your custom resource is to just, um, or to find different custom resources um, is to do OC, OC API dash resources. Then you can find a list of resources that are available to Kubernetes. But for custom resource, um, we have a custom resource definition. This is our manifest that our controller is continuously watching, right? It wants it wants to emulate this. It wants to always be as similar as it can be to our custom resource that we define, our, as similar to our custom resource definition that we define. So here's our custom resource, which is Vesti. Vesti is our kind. Remember we have like pods, um, secrets, and con config maps. Vesti is our um, custom resource that we have for our operator. Okay. Next slide. So for custom resource, um, we have quite a few different things um, that you need for your API here. Uh, the REST API is the fundamental fabric of Kubernetes and all operations and communications between components and external user commands are REST API calls that the API server handles. Uh, the API server exposes an HTTP um, API that lets end users, different um, end users, different parts of your cluster, and external components communicate with one another. So this is how um, all the components of your cluster communicate, right? With the control plane and the API server. And so for um, your custom resource, you can have um, group 
you can have a group version, kind, and different specs. So there, aside from the core API groups, there's also apps and storage, Kubernetes.io um, for versioning. Um, versioning um, is different API versions. Different AB, API versions indicate the different levels of stability and support. Um, so say alpha has may have some bugs on it. Beta is pretty well tested, um, but may have some things it needs to work on. And then stable means your um, your custom resource, um, your application is, is good, right? There's different versions out there and good. Um, kind is your resource and how it should be referenced, right? Pods, deployments, or in our instance, bestie. And then specs is how your users define their intent or desired layout for the given kind. Say you can specify what container image you want to run, what port should be exposed, or configurations that changes how your app may be deployed in a given cluster. So this is how um, it, it may look, um, how it usually looks. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, you have the APIs group version and kind. Also, you can also have the APIs group version namespace, um, your particular namespace and kind. And so after controller, resource, and we have knowledge. So the three main things of operators, controller, resource, knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is domain or application specific, which is often learned from users or administrators rather than developers. Um, what does that mean? So it means that um, knowledge, the knowledge that you want to implement into your operator is often um, things that um, your, end, your end users uh, need or things that your administrators um, want to implement as well. Like, being able to install the application, being able to scale your application if there's more requests than, than you currently have and you wanna be able to scale pods largely enough so that there, there won't be any downtime. It can mean um, implementing self-heal. Again, with pods going down, you can um, create new pods and with backups and updates, cleanups, um, you can, um, if there's a new version um, of, of your application, this application specific knowledge will be able to back up and update your application accordingly. And with resilience and observability, you can incorporate uh, metrics and all of that into your operators so that you understand what's going on with your application and how to respond to that accordingly. An example of the knowledge that we implemented um, in our operator, the L5 operator is um, being able to um, create a job to seed our database before our application pods were created. So we utilize the Postgres database and um, we utilize Postgres operator in our operator. So it's like an operator with an operator, right? And so um, with this job, um, we, we decided to um, seed our database beforehand um, because if we didn't have our seeded database beforehand and our application pods were already made, it, made and requests were going in, then there'd be an error because our database wasn't seeded with um, all the information that it required. And so our operator had this, had this we, implemented, we implemented this into our operator. And so that's how we got our um, database all seeded before our application pods were created. And so here are other few examples of what, of the knowledge that other operators are trying to implement into um, their operators. Um, so Argo CD um, automates the task required when operating Argo CD cluster by managing the full life cycle of Argo CD and its components. The L5 operator, um, the knowledge it implements is automatic, automatic installation, um, seeding data, um, managing the application version and upgrades, horizontally um, auto-scaling the pods and um, giving back metrics um, according to the request traffic in the application. For a Postgres country operator, the knowledge it implements is being able to install the database software, create databases, um, starting and shutting instances, managing user and security, um, among a whole bunch of other um, knowledge specific, um, application specific knowledge for, for the software. So again, what are operators? Operators contain three big things, three major things, um, controller, resource, and knowledge. And again, it's basically a robot with a post-it note or the image 
that it has. It has the controller and it has the resource. And it's just trying to make sure that um, that your application is as you you want it to be. And then it has other jobs on top of it. Another example is say you're the owner of the shop, right? You're the owner of the shop and you have a store, store manager, right? You can give a list of tasks to your store manager and say they can manage money, they can take customer orders, they can do, they can buy products and do shipping and all of that. Or else they can just manage everything else and you can manage all the money and stuff like that. So an operator is like your store manager. You give it a list of the things that you want it to manage and it will manage it for you. And those are the people going to your store, your request, right? So they manage all of that according to what you give it in, in the list. So why are operators valuable? Operators are valuable because they build an ecosystem of software that can be easy, safe, and reliable to use and operate as a cloud service. So we have this whole entire library of um, operators that that can be used by, uh, um, by anybody, that, that can be used by companies and other people to utilize in their own applications. And it's easy and safe and reliable because we do tests on these and we make, um, we make sure they are up to par and they're as defined, um, their level is as we define it to be. Um, why operators are also um, valuable is because they're low touch, remotely managed, and they have one click updates. So again, on this, um, on Operator Hub or on um, Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform, you can you can download these, um, install these operators onto your cluster um, very quickly with just one touch, um, with one click, and you can utilize them in your application. Also, operators are valuable because it's software that works for Kubernetes works. Um, so wherever Kubernetes works operators work because OpenShift operators are, any of Kubernetes operators are built, it's built upon and extended upon um, Kubernetes, existing Kubernetes concepts. So when should we use operators? Um, operators are, are definitely very useful, um, but it's also not for everyone. So these are some guiding questions that can help you determine whether your application needs an operator, whether it can be um, useful for your application. So is your application a stateful application? Does your application contain application-specific tasks that could benefit from um, managed automation that Kubernetes doesn't fulfill, right? And would you like your application to be more scalable, repeatable, and standardized? So stateful applications, um, it includes persistent storage and other elements um, external to application which require ex extra work to manage and maintain. So operators, can help ease the the, um, the tasks for that. And being able to um, create an application that's scalable, repeatable, and standardized, operators can help with that because it's you can build consistent responses with, with um, events that occur in your application. So where are operators currently being used? Um, operators are currently being used all over the place. AWS, PostgreSQL, Dell, GitLab, IBM, Prometheus, Grafana, there's a whole variety of operators that are being used and are available um, on Operator Hub. We'll talk more about that in, in a bit here, but there's a whole library of operators that you can utilize and use to even create your own operator, like the L5 operator. Use the Postgres Crunchy operator for our database um, to create our L5 operator. And it makes creating operators easier, but then it also, you help the community by building more operators by making your job easier. And so next slide, um, how can we create our own operators? Um, I'm gonna hand it off to Sundaria as she talks more about that. And while we get into the more hands-on stuff. So far uh, we have seen why, what, and where do we use operators? Why are they valuable? So we have covered all the W's of the of our presentation. Now I'll walk you all through the one hedge that is how can we create our own operators the tools make it very much easier to develop your, to create or develop your operator from scratch so the tools are nothing but the operator framework the operator framework has three components or the three parts we can say one is operator sdk 
which includes building, testing, and iterating your operator. And the next one is operator lifecycle manager, which involves the task like installing, managing, and upgrading the operator once you have built using operator SDK uh, tools. And the last uh, component is the operator hub.io. Once your operator is ready, uh, the next step that you would be doing is publishing and sharing across uh, other Kubernetes developer or users. So this acts as a repository where you can publish your operator. So let us see in depth about each component here. Let us uh, talk about the operator SDK. So when we are seeing uh, the operator SDK tools make it easier. So why do we uh, say that? because it provides a uh, many high level api and abstractions uh, which help in writing the logic more intuitively and it provides various tools and uh, libraries for scaffolding your projects which generates uh, some uh, default files that are required to, to run your operator and publish them in the operator hub.io and it also provides some extensions to cover common operator uh, use cases so the installation part is if uh, it can be just in, uh, installed with a single command to install operator SDK if you are using a Mac, or it can be done uh, from the uh, GitHub uh, resource that is available. You can just clone the repository and do make install, and uh, you would have your operator SDK running on your system. And uh, yeah, so when we are saying scaffolded, what is act actually scaffolded here? A lot of uh, files like makerfile, main.co, project file, docker file, and a lot of uh, boilerplate and tooling will be scaffolded. The main.co is nothing but the controller manager, and the uh, op project file has the metadata for the operator SDK, and the docker file is uh, also generated. Uh, which is for building a container image calling your operator and uh, we are will be still uh, missing out on our controller logic and api code uh, which will will be explaining while we are giving the demo session on how to scaffold your uh, first operator project so what are like uh, main goals or uh, benefits of the operator SDK is it min uh, maximizes the opportunity, minimizes human efforts and burden. So the end user, all he has to do is he should have the container image and manifest and he's good to use uh, and develop the operator. So the next component uh, in the operator framework is the OLM, the Operator Lifecycle Manager. Uh, this component will help users to install, update, manage the lifecycle of the operator uh, and other service associated with it while running on the cluster. So it provides a declarative way to install and manage the lifecycle of your operator on the cluster. So uh, the features of uh, Operator Lifecycle Manager, it provides a rich update mechanisms to keep your operators up to date automatically. Uh, with the OLM kind of formatting, uh, packaging format, uh, operators can express uh, dependencies on the platform and uh, on other operators as well. And uh, this framework will make, will make the operator and their services available for the cluster uh, users to select and install. And it will uh, also prevent conflicting operators owning the same API being installed uh, and ensuring the cluster stability of which we are uh, cluster stability. And then the declarative UI controls by which uh, it enables the operator to behave like managed services providers uh, through the API they expose. So, so far, these are the features and benefits of OLM. Next, let us see the architecture of OLM. So OLM mainly has two components. 
uh, one is OLM operator and the catalog operator. By default, the operator lifecycle manager will run in the OpenShift container platform, which aids the cluster administrator in installing, upgrading, and granting access to the operators running on their cluster. So let us see uh, in detail about uh, operator group and catalog operator. So the main function of the op uh, OLM operator is in, uh, responsible for installing uh, applications defined by cluster service version, which is CSV. And uh, once the requ uh, required resources are specified in the CSV, uh, the job of the cluster operator will be done. Uh, uh, this uh, so. After this, the OLM is not uh, connected with the creation of underlying resources. So if this is not done manually, the catalog operator, which is the second component, uh, can help providing a resolution for these needs. Uh, so next one is the catalog operator. Uh, so once the OLM operator uh, will do the install part, the catalog operator will uh, take up the monitoring of uh, subscription and catalog source and the catalog themselves. Mm. So whenever uh, this catalog operator finds a change in the subscription or operator group or install plan, it will generate a new one and make sure that it is updated automatically. Um, yeah, so this is the basic uh, architecture of OLM. So when we uh, talk about the workflow, uh, it can be discussed in three parts. One is CSV, catalog source, and subscription. So CSV uh, can be defined as the main entry point for packaging and operator for OLM. Uh, it is the cluster service version, which is a YAML manifest, manifest created from operator uh, metadata that will assist the uh, OLM in running the operator on a cluster. So this CSV will mainly have the information about logo, description, version, and any technical uh, information related to the to that operator will be mentioned in the CSV. So if we uh, see the components of CSV, we have the metadata, install strategy, and the CRDs. So here, uh, metadata will have the application metadata, which includes name, description, version, any related links, labels, and icon for your operator for which the base code will be included in this file under the metadata. And next, the install strategy will be having the type, which is the deployment, and it has the set of service accounts and required permissions mentioned in here and other set of deployments. The last one, CRDs, uh, it will have the uh, information related to the uh, namespaces and uh, all the list of uh, resources that the, that the operator will be interacting with. And it also has the descriptor section, which, in, which will include details about uh, CRD specifications and status field to provide semantic in, information. And next, uh, the components uh, at an onset here will be catalog source, subscription, install plan, and operator group. So we have seen uh, what what is a catalog source earlier, and so again, it is it is nothing but an operator index which will represent a store of uh, metadata that OLM can query to discover and install operators and their uh, dependencies. And subscriptions are nothing but an intention to install an operator, which will describe the channel of an operator package to subscribe to and whether to perform updates automatically and or manually. All these details will be included in the subscription. It also defines the name and namespace of the operator and next the install plan uh, this will uh, define a set of resources to be created in order to install or upgrade a specific version of your uh, cluster service version which is uh, defined by a csv and then uh, so our olm will support is designed in such a way that it will support all the name uh, uh, 
namespace modes with like single uh, single namespace, all namespace, multi namespace, or own namespace. And next comes the last component, which is operator group, which will provide a multi-tenant configuration to OLM installed operators. Uh, it, it is said to be a member of operator group. An operator is said to be a member of operator group if its CSV will exist in the same namespace as that of an operator group. So yeah, this is about the operator lifecycle management and Next, the last, uh, how do you deploy using OLM? So here are the quick commands that you would be using to deploy your uh, operator using OLM once you have uh, developed, built, and test using your operator SDK tools. And the last component of the operator framework is operator hub. Uh, which is nothing but a web interface that uh, the cluster administrators would be using to discover and install uh, operators to automate their deployment and maintenance of platform services and workloads. So this operator uh, hub will uh, is nothing but a repository or a place where you can file all the operators that are uh, developed and published there. The, you can use these operators in your application, which will automate uh, your functionalities or tasks that you would like to incorporate in your project. So uh, the operator hub is designed to address the needs of both Kubernetes developers as well as users. So when I say it is useful for the Kubernetes developers, it is useful in such a way that it provides a common registry where they can publish their operators alongside with the description, relevant details like version, image, code, repository, etc. And they can also update already published operators to new versions when they are released. So not only that they can publish their operators, they can also submit the uh, uh, updated version on the operators which are already existing there. And for the users, uh, it helps uh, it helps in uh, discovering and downloading operators from a central location that has content uh, content which has been screened for the previous mentioned criteria and scanned for known vulnerabilities. In addition to this, the other uh, use uh, facility or the feature of Operator Hub is the developers can guide users of their operators with the Prescript, uh, prescriptive examples of the class, uh, custom resources that they introduce to interact with the application. So one such example or the other instance similar to the operator hub is Red Hat OpenShift container problem with uh, a platform, which is a private one uh, which serves as a platform as a service for enterprise that runs OpenShift on public cloud or uh, on-premise uh, infrastructure. It is a Kubernetes-based platform, and it comes with a streamlined automatic install feature. So with a single click, users or developers can install the operators and use them in their application. And there are many other capabilities for OpenShift a container platform, like portability, integrated ecosystem, user interface, integrated CI CD pipelines, automatic upgrades, multiple clusters, persistent storage, and scalability. Uh, let us see in brief like what does these uh, capabilities mean. So uh, the OpenShift uh, container platform, uh, it, you, we can quickly scale your uh, scale our applications to thousands of instances account across the hundreds of nodes, and it provides persistent storage where we can leverage uh, our storage to run stateful applications or uh, cloud native stateless applications. And it also has an extensive ecosystem of uh, third third-party tools created and integrated by its community. And it also uh, ensures that containers are easily portable between a developer workstation and a production environment as well. And it has a convenient user interface where uh, it allows you to directly access a large number of command line tools and multi-device console and many more. So these are uh, the 
capabilities of Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So instead of doing all the work from scratch, you can even utilize already published operators from operatorhub.io or Red Hat OpenShift container problem uh, platform with a single click. So, so far, uh, we have seen uh, how to develop operator and why do we use them. So the last part here is the capability levels, which are, are divided into five levels as per the operator SDK guidelines. The first one is basic install, by which uh, we mean that our application should uh, support all type of install modes, be it by a single click from the operator hub or by uh, installing the CRD, it should support every install mode as per the uh, SDK framework. And the second, uh, Second one is the seamless upgrade, which means uh, automatic upgrades to the operand or operator. So whenever there is a change in any functionality of the operator or internal software updates, the, your, your application should be able to uh, upgrade this automatically without involving any human uh, support or work. And third one is full, sli uh, full life cycle which uh, includes backup and failure recovery. So when uh, whenever we update your operand or operator, the application should ensure that it also functions for your previous version without generating any errors. That is what we mean by full life cycle and failure uh, backup and failure recovery here. And fourth one is deep insights by which uh, it involves monitoring all the metrics related to your application. Like uh, if we take the example of the L5 operator we have been talking about in our presentation, uh, it gives the uh, results like uh, how many operands or uh, how many requests have been made, how many are successful, and if the number of uh, requests fail. So it has the log of this information, and this can be done using the Prometheus operator, which is gen, uh, uh, which is utilized by the operator SDK as an inbuilt, inbuilt function. And the last level is autopilot, which is horizontal or uh, vertical scaling, abnormal detection or uh, scheduled tuning. So these are the five capability levels of an operator. Uh, further, we will be uh, walking you all through how to scaffold a project using operator SDK. Yeah, so uh, one uh, initially we'll be creating a project in our uh, home directory. Like just NKDIR. And then we'll be uh, uh, doing CD to into that path. And then we would be initializing this project with the uh, command operator SDK in it. So yeah, this will be generating a go.mod file to be used with our Go modules. And we will be mentioning the repo path here so that if you are creating the project outside, outside the Go path, it is required that you make sure to mention this here since uh, it will require a value, a valid module path. So yeah, once uh, you initialize your repository, uh, the next step would be uh, creating the API, an API for it. So yeah, as you can see, writing scaffold for you to edit. So 
uh, this basic skeleton of the project is generated by uh, giving us all the files that are required for our project. And when you do a tree command, you can see a quick sex skeleton of your project in the command line. Yeah, so we see that a Docker file, make file, project, main.go, all these have been generated by doing the create API, the customization YAML file, manager folder, manifest. So yeah, and still uh, we will have to, uh, even after doing this, we will have to create our new API and controller, which will have our uh, application specific controller uh, logic. And yeah. So in the memcached controller.go will have your uh, con uh, controller program for the application. And then uh, in the con config folder, you will be having the cluster service version YAML file in the manifest folder. Yeah, in the, uh, and we would be creating our CSV, uh, which will include all the uh, details of your operator like the logo, description, technical details, and other uh, uh, prerequisites that are in uh, involved for using your operator. So yeah, this is this is the these are the steps uh, you would be using to scaffold your project. We have also shared a quick references and exercises that would be helpful for you all if you would like to start off in the operator journey and develop a new operator from scratch. So we are uh, we have included uh, the slides and presentation articles here and also the exercises. And we can you can also find the uh, link to the repository which uh, which has all the branches with five levels separated for the L5 operator. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attending the presentation, uh, simplifying operators substantially. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to put it in the chat later or contact us. Um, um, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you all.